What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video. And today, you know I had to make this video because of the great news that we just got yesterday from Algorithm DJ Pro. They now have integrated Apple Music, the streaming service, into the DJ Pro app. And that is huge news because people have been asking for this for a long time, especially after Spotify was removed from uh, the streaming services or from the streaming options in DJ platforms pretty much across the board. Across the board, there's no platform that uses Spotify. Instead, Tidal came in and filled in that uh, void and Tidal's okay. Title is cool. I've used Title over the past couple of years, maybe the last two years, to um, work with uh, wedding clients when they send me playlists. I load it into my Title and I have it available to stream. It's not the main music source, but it's a backup source and it also helps me fill in requests. But Title has some limitations. It seems like most of the music on Tidal, especially when it came to like rap and hip hop, was the dirty version. It was hard to find the clean versions. It didn't seem like until recently that you could really tell the difference between a clean and a dirty version. And even then, it's not still very clear. Sometimes I get a song that doesn't have the explicit mark next to it and I play it and it's a dirty version. With Apple Music, they're way more consistent about labeling clean versus explicit. They have a bigger library than Tidal. In fact, I've read that they're only they're close they're close second to Spotify. For some reason, Spotify has a bigger uh, catalog, but Apple Music has over 100 million songs available. So that's a great addition to have. And for me, it's even greater because I already subscribe to Apple Music. It's part of my family plan. So I have Apple Music, Apple Fitness, Apple TV, um, just pretty much all of the most of most of the subscriptions that come along with it. And I say most of because we're going to get into that later. There's one that I don't pay for. It's not part of the bundle. And it was actually a problematic feature when it came to iTunes long ago, and that is iTunes Match. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but I want to talk about mainly on this video a couple of things. Uh, what it means now that we have Apple Music in DJ Pro, um, how it kind of works, and also the another, another thing I want to talk about in this video was how to get your music from your Serato crates into your DJ Pro. So I think I need to, um, originally that's what this video was supposed to be about. Originally I only planned on making a video about how to export from Serato DJ Pro your crates to uh, Algorithm DJ. And this has been a, a video I've been planning on making probably for the past, maybe maybe all this week because this is a project that I finally finished and got done and I wanted to share that knowledge with you but yesterday which was February 1st that's when the announcement came out that uh, Apple Music was added to DJ Pro so that caused a lot of excitement in the DJ community again once again shout out to Algorithm DJ Pro for innovating and bringing the excitement to the DJ game you know there's so much other confusion going on with these other companies and you don't know what's in the future for really anything nobody knows the future but the future is really um, hard to predict when it comes to like Serato, Alpha Theta, even like tractor, you know, one moment, one moment I thought they were dead and gone. Next moment I hear that they're trying to uh, work on improvements and make a comeback. So you don't know. But Algorithm DJ has been consistent. They were the first to bring out stems initially in DJ platforms. And then they got surpassed with the quality. And then they came back with uh, another hit with the new version of stems. And it's even better than what you're seeing in some of these other platforms, which that is in a objective type of an opinion because in my opinion I think it does sound better I held off from using Serato stems because when I heard other DJs using it it wasn't really something that you know sounded great it might have been because of the quality of the files that they were using but when I started using once algorithms DJ Pro in, improved their version of stems their neural mix uh when it got improved a couple months ago, it was like, okay, now I'm ready to put more time in 
effort into moving to DJ Pro. And now here we go again with another great uh, innovation, not innovation, but another great improvement to the DJ landscape by adding Apple Music. Now, with that said and done, the reason Apple Music is now allowed in um, DJ Pro is because they, Apple, they are trying to push their Apple Vision Pro headset. And that is, if you don't know what it is, it's like a virtual reality headset, very similar to the Oculus uh, 1 and 2. I have an Oculus 2. I use it occasionally. I don't use it as much as I thought I did. I would, but I have it. And um, it's just a virtual reality headset. So what they are pushing is that they're hoping that when people buy this headset that they'll use the DJing app to have a virtual party or a virtual club and go DJ. And I just, I don't think that's going to work really. So uh, I hope that if it does flop, that Apple doesn't decide later on to say, well, people aren't using it. Let's take a, take Apple Music out of the DJ platforms. But that's just me being a nervous Nelly. So I'm just going to not really focus on that. I'm just going to be happy that we have it for now. But um we just need to rem re remember that, that Apple Music into the DJ platform is because they're trying to push another product that is the Apple Vision Pro. And I checked the price on that. That Apple Vision Pro is like $3,500 for a headset. And I got to be honest, when I got my Oculus 2, I thought the Oculus 2 was a bit pricey at $300. So there's no way I'm spending $3,500 on a virtual reality headset. So... I'm just going to enjoy the fact that we now have Apple Music in DJ Pro. So I want to jump into the DJ Pro or the Apple Music part, and then I might do a separate video or I might chop this video up and make the second half, which is how to pull your music from um, Serato, your crates from Serato into uh, DJ Pro because it's I don't want to make it too long of a video. But one of the questions that kept coming up or one of the things people were talking about with the inclusion of Apple Music is the fact that Apple does have a feature where they will scan your music library and it's it, they kind of frame it like it's supposed to be helpful, but it's really not. What they do is they scan your library and if they see a song that you have and it's a low bit rate, they say, well, we'll bring it up and replace it with a version that's 256K. And, you know, that's like the standard of what you get when you download from iTunes, that, that quality. Um, but now on, on the flip side, if they see a version that is like 320K or even a WAV file, they'll replace it with a version that is 256K. So in essence, they're dropping down the quality of that song. And they say they're doing it in an effort to save space on your hard drive. And that might be it. Sometimes, you know, these companies, they come up with an idea that they think is helping and it's not really helping. It's actually hindering. We don't need you to touch or manage our music, Apple. We just want you to store it on our computer. Some people want to sync it over the cloud. That's fine. I don't really like doing that. And um, that's it. But with this other feature which is called iTunes match that is when they will scan your library and try to match it with a version that they have and replace it and as DJs we don't like that because we have different versions we have intro edits we have DJ remixes we have DJ versions of songs we don't necessarily want to play the retail version of a song so that's what a lot of people are worried about but the thing about it is you really have to know how this stuff works and they don't make it easy i promise you i did some research i had to go through a couple of different pages on the apple site to kind of figure out how this is working and you know they have three different things they have itunes match they have apple music and then they have itunes in the cloud and actually if you want to um really get nitpicky about it there's also, again, Apple Music. Apple did not do a great job in naming these services. They replaced the name of iTunes, which is the program on your computer, on your Mac, or even your PC that you would use to store your music, make playlists, add it to your mobile devices. They changed that name and call it now Music. 
Well, they have a streaming service called Apple Music. So when you start talking to people about music, Apple Music, it gets really confusing. And I really think Apple should fix that. They really need to just, you know, get, go back to iTunes. That's what everybody knows. I'm not sure why they decided to ditch it. They said they wanted to separate it because back then iTunes had TV, movies, books, podcast and music all under the iTunes title and then they broke it up so now you have Apple TV Apple uh, podcast Apple music but it's just it wasn't it it probably felt like a great idea when they thought of it but the implementation is not great and it's very confusing for folks so you have iTunes slash Apple music that's what I'm going to refer to it. Then you have Apple Music, the streaming platform. Then you have iTunes in the cloud, which is where you sync your um, music across devices. And then you have iTunes Match. At one, one time, iTunes Match was kind of built into the syncing feature, the iTunes uh, Cloud feature. It was like if you turned on iTunes Cloud, your music went up to the cloud, it got scanned and stuff got replaced, your library got altered. Now I believe they've made a change quietly and they didn't really tell anybody, but I had to do some searching and I'll pull up the uh, screenshots just so you can see. But with iTunes Match now, let me pull it up. I got it on my computer here. So iTunes Match gives you access to all of your music on all your devices, even songs that you've imported from other sources such as CDs. That's straight from the website. So that means that even music that you didn't buy from the iTunes store, say you ripped the CD and added it to your iTunes library, it's going to get synced up to the cloud and basically synced up across your devices. But during that process with iTunes Match, that's when they start scanning and replacing files. So don't turn that on. Or better yet, don't subscribe to it because it is a separate feature now. It's not built into um, syncing your library across the cloud. Those are two separate features that can do similar, almost as they do some functions the same, but then there are iTunes Match does something a little bit more, which is the swapping out of the music. And I found out, like I was doing some searching, and I was like, well, how do I know whether or not I have Apple or iTunes Match turned on? Well, the way you do it is you have to go into iTunes, go actually go into the iTunes store. If you go into the iTunes store and you scroll all the way to the bottom of the iTunes store, you will see, I'm talking about way, way down past all the music suggestions. When you get to the bottom, you'll see under features, you have purchase music and then you have iTunes match. If you click on iTunes match, you'll get... Um, a pop-up and it will tell you that iTunes Match is actually a subscription that you have to add on and it is $24.99 a month. So I know I'm not paying $29.99, $24.99 a month, a year, I'm sorry, $24.99 a year for them to be able to use iTunes Match. I know that's not part of my subscription. It's not part of the family bundle that I have. So I don't have to worry about iTunes messing around with my music. Um, so I really want people to be cognizant of that. You know, don't just take information that is from like 10 years ago, seven years ago. Yeah, back then, it that's what it did, it did when they first introduced iTunes Match and they quietly responded to the backlash and they made it a separate subscription. $24.99 per year. And then they'll match your music up. If you don't subscribe to it, if you don't want it, you just click no thanks, and then you won't have to worry about that. You can still go into your iTunes uh, music uh, preferences, and you can choose to sync your library across devices. I don't do it because I'm still a little leery of it. I don't want my, I don't want all my music synced over all my devices because each of my devices have a different amount of storage and. My iPhone, I have two iPhones, one's a personal and one's a work one, and neither of them have enough space to be syncing my whole library. And then my iPad has enough space on it to possibly sync my whole library, but I still don't want it because there's some stuff that I don't want on there. I don't want 
all of the acapellas or all of the um, random sound drops that I've recorded over the t years on my um, iPad. I just keep it on my i on my uh, MacBook Pro. My MacBook Pro is basically my main device for managing and organizing the music, and I do that mainly with iTunes slash music and with Serato DJ. You know, I'll use both. Mainly I use iTunes because I, I end up syncing my playlist. Now, I did do a video about a month ago, and I'll put a link to it up here where I show you how I am using a cable to connect my, uh, the charger cable, to connect my iPad to my MacBook Pro and go into the sync settings and choose which playlist I want to sync up. Choose which either, you can choose playlist, drama, uh, genre, artist, or even the whole library. You can choose different parameters that you want to sync. What I sync up is my playlist. And that's just one way for me to do it. That's a way for me to keep up with the ever-evolving music library I have. But then I have another method for bringing over my music from Serato DJ Pro. And it's a little bit more involved. And both of these things actually involve some work. None of this is just some automated system that's just going to, you know, magically make all your music apply or show up on every device. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and I would, even if they did have a system that worked that way, I probably wouldn't trust it too much. I'd have to go back and do a lot of checking to make sure that stuff did get properly transferred. And it'd have to happen a couple of times before I could honestly just tr blindly trust it. I'm more of a fan of doing the, the spot checking, making sure that things are where they need to be because when you get to the gig, it, you don't want to have to troubleshoot or search for stuff. You want to be able to know and be confident that your music is where you expect it to be. So um, I think I'm going to kind of wrap this up right here and then make a separate video for copying your music from um, Serato to... Uh, your iPad so you can read it into DJ Pro uh, mainly because I don't like making really long videos I've learned that you know videos that go over like 10 12 minutes are they don't get watched fully unless I really am doing a deep deep dive and even then people will skip through so um, we'll end it here I'm just gonna um, just edit this up post it up and then pick right up where I left off and we'll do a part two which is going to be getting your crates from Serato into uh, your iPad and then showing how to make playlists in DJ Pro. It's really cool and there is some stuff you may need to have like a certain um, adapter for your flash drive if you're going from USB-C to USB-A, but it just depends on what setup you have. You know, if you've got a newer Mac that has just USB-C both ways, it can be a lot easier. But anyway, um, hopefully, you will subscribe, continue to like. I am really um, going deep into my journey into using Algorithm DJ Pro. I feel like it is a great app and it probably possibly is the future of DJing. You know, um, they have a lot of support from Apple. They have a lot of support from some really great DJs like Angelo. Um, and, you know, it's just time to do shake it up a little bit. So keep watching. You'll see my journey. You'll see my trials and errors. I've got videos coming up of me using the Mixon 8 Pro, which I just got, and I'm learning a lot with that as well. So just keep watching, subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side. Peace.